Hello, my name is Stephen Preston and in this short screencast I'm going to show you how to migrate your AutoCAD 2012.NET applications to AutoCAD JAWS. I'll be demonstrating how to migrate a simple VB.NET application and also a C Sharp application and along the way we'll see some slight differences in migrating VB.NET apps and C Sharp apps. I've already got my VB.NET application loaded here into Visual Studio 2010, so let's start migrating it. First thing we need to do is to reference the AutoCAD JAWS managed assemblies. So we'll go to our reference path and click here for reference path. And at the moment you can see our reference path is the Object Air 2012 SDK. So we need to update that to the AutoCAD. JAWS Object Airx SDK and so we go to where I have that installed which is here and we select the ink folder as usual and we update our reference path. I'll just delete this one because it's not needed. So now we have our JAWS versions of the managed assemblies loaded so by compiling our application now we can immediately see if there are any problems when I actually build it I see on my command output window there's actually a huge number of errors a lot more than we'd expect and the reason for this is because of the big split work we've been doing over the last few releases where we're separating out functionality between the AutoCAD executable ACAD XE and a core DLL called ACCore.DLL which holds the main business logic of the AutoCAD application that work for JAWS has culminated in the DLL no longer being statically linked into ACAD XE, it's now a separate DLL. And the .NET API and the Object Airx API structure actually mirrors that now. And so what we have is a new DLL that we have to reference. So I'll just reference that now. So we go again to where I have my SDK which is here, and we go to the ink folder, and we see as usual we have ACDBMGD DLL and ACMGD DLL, but some of the functionality from ACMGD DLL is now in AC Core MGD DLL, which we have to reference for our JAWS projects. We'll set copy local to false. And of course this means that your AutoCAD 2012.NET applications will need rebuilding in order to work with AutoCAD JAWS. So now let's build our project again. And we see we have another error. We double click on that to find it. And this is an error with a document manager collection in AutoCAD 2012 and, and previous to that as well, document manager had an add method. That has now been moved between from AC MGD to AC between ACMGD and AC Core MGD, and so it's not actually part of the application services document collection class anymore. It's actually part of a document collection extension class. And you'll see when we we migrate a C sharp application, but we we manage that in di a different way for C sharp than we do for VB.NET. But for VB.NET, we simply import the document extension class. So we import Autodesk, AutoCAD application services document collection extension like so. So now if I rebuild this now we see that the build has succeeded and that's we've now done everything we need to do to migrate our application. I should mention there are some other extension classes as well. There's a document extension, there's a Windows extension, and there's also an editor extension. And you'll find the information on these changes in the What's New guide in the Object Airx SDK. So I'm not going to run the example. When you've done your own migration yourself, you can test it and run it in AutoCAD. But this is now ready to go. But we're now going to move on to our C-Sharp application. So I'm going to open a new project. For our C-Sharp project, we're going to be migrating the MGD DBG sample. This is a very comprehensive sample, touches most areas of the API. So it's a good way to see many of the changes that you may encounter for your own applications. So we've loaded the project. First thing we have to do again, of course, is we need to set our reference path so that we're referencing 
the appropriate assemblies. So we'll go to where I have those located, we select our JAWS SDK, we select the ink folder, and we have to remember to click the add folder button, that's one I always forget. And while we're here, another small change we have to make as well, in this case we're targeting .NET Framework 3.5 for our project. This may be an issue as well for your Visual Basic applications, which I, I didn't come across for the previous example because that was already targeting .NET Framework 4. But you need to target .NET Framework 4 for AutoCAD JAWS applications. That requires the project be reloaded, like so. And of course we know we also have to add our new, re new reference. So I'm going to add that now. Click Browse. We're already in the ink folder. It's AC Core MGD DLL. We add the reference, we close the dialog, we select the DLL, and set copy local to false. So now let's build the application and see what happens. So first errors we find are in the graphic system view class. We seem to have a property which no longer exists. And so this was an interesting one. This is where for the, the GS view class from Object Air Act, which is the graphic system view class in .NET, we had a couple of properties. One is viewport, and another one is viewport D, which basically both returned the size of a viewport. And they were quite badly named, so we've taken a break in API compatibility to give them more sensible names. Now, in, now in this case, saying that a view was created, we we're just identifying which view it was. So I think in this case, rather than show uh, some kind of size again, I'm just going to change this to viewport ID, like so. And then, of course, the, uh, the, the underlining goes away to say the error is gone. So now we're going to be reporting that a viewport of a particular ID was actually created. Let's move to our next error. Next, we have this MGR class here is actually the graphic system manager class. And this is another renamed property, so the easy way to find the property is sometimes you'll have to compare the 2012 help files or object browser with, with the JAWS help files to see how, how, the, how the property has been renamed. But it's usually straight, fairly straightforward. So in this case, display size has been renamed to something which is a little bit more descriptive, which is device independent display size, like so. So we'll get rid of that. and the underlining goes away to say that we did OK there. The next one is doc.acad document. And this is another case where the property in the old class has been moved to a method of an extension class. So we have to handle that this time in C-sharp, which is a little bit differently from how we handled it in VB.NET. You remember in VB.NET we actually called an, used an import directive on the document extension class, where in that case it was actually the document collection extension class. We don't have to do that in this case, but so that this works smoothly. We at the moment have used the using directive to create an alias for our application services namespace. But we've not actually imported or flattened that namespace into our project. So what I'm actually going to do here is, as well as giving it an alias, I'm also just going to import it. Oh, sorry, use a using statement. You can tell I usually program in VB. So now we're going to build the solution. And of course, it's going to generate that same error again. But I just wanted to use that to quickly get back to where we were. That was the actual problem here. So this doc ACAD document class, actually this has turned into a method on the extension class. And so it actually turned into this. And so if I actually rebuild that, you see that error has actually gone away. But anyway, let's go back to the top of the list again. And I thought I'd done that. OK. Let's change that again and build it. Here's another example here. Now in this case we're actually listing some data and so we have the the viewport here which I'm going to change again just for consistency to viewport ID. But we also have this viewport D 
And viewport D also used to return a size, but it's a very badly named property. So this is actually viewport D, which is no way of knowing by reading the property what it actually returns is actually now called viewport extends. So let's try rebuilding the project now. How are we getting on? Okay, next we have a status bar. This is another document extension issue. So the status bar again has changed from a property on the document class to a method on the document extension class. So we just name that to get status bar, remembering our parentheses. Next to a warnings. Now this problem here He's actually saying that we've, we're missing a, a reference to a, a system XAML assembly, and I assume that's uh, it's not that's not specific to AutoCAD.NET. I'm assuming that's because we moved from .NET Framework 3 to .NET Framework 4. But anyway, let's add that. So where are we? System, 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 XAML. There it is. So we add that assembly. Okay, that disappeared. Next we have icon and again if we look here there's no obvious replacement and again this is because we have a window extension class so I'm going to go back to the top of the document and I'm going to use a using directive to bring in Autodesk AutoCAD Windows like so let's just rebuild that find the error. So now when I do the dot we have a get icon which is now a method so it needs its parentheses and the same with size we have a get size property is that correct? Yes location get location I think you're getting the idea now we'll just go through them all Now here's an interesting one, host app services. This particular method has been renamed, this property has been renamed, and that's actually become, it should actually be two, a choice of two. We have the machine registry product root key and the user registry product root key replaces that old property. So I'm going to use machine registry root key. So just rebuilding one more time. We see that the this is the dynamic linker class has a product key property, and that has actually been replaced by if you used that in your application before, instead you need to use host application services, either machine registry product root key, or you'll remember that there was also a user. registry product root key and so actually in the context of this application because we've already used that data this is now obsolete so there we go let's do one more build and finally MGD DBG has compiled and built successfully so as you saw, the main things are we have to move from .NET Framework 3.5 to .NET, Word, .NET Framework 4. We need to add a reference, a copy local equals false reference to AC Core MGD DLL. We have some renamed methods and properties. We have some properties of certain classes have been changed to methods of certain other classes. And basically that's it. Once you've done those simple changes, your .NET application should be ready to load into AutoCAD JAWS and to run without problem. So good luck with your .NET programming. Thank you very much and goodbye.